We don't have any room for average or everyday artifacts in this video. We've reserved this space exclusively for big hitters. From finds that shocked their finders to discoveries that shed new light on ancient civilizations, this is a video full of wonders. We're delighted to be able to share it with you. So let's get started. As we began to make this video for you, archaeologists and scientists in China were still marveling over the discovery of a bronze artifact in the ancient ruins of Sanxingtui Sichuan. They believe it to be roughly 3,000 years old, but have never before come across an object of this shape from that era. What makes it both rare and unusual is the combination of a wide, open mouth and a smaller, square-shaped body covered with elaborate depictions of animal faces. Bird symbols appear to have been particularly important to whoever made this, with symmetrical bird patterns on the body of the piece and more birds on its shoulders. Objects with similar bodies have been found in the area in the past, but they've all had square openings at the top, rather than the round one that this one has. The only artifact experts are aware of that's even remotely like this is a famous bronze relic that's currently exhibited in the National Palace Museum in Taipei. The Taipei artifact doesn't have the bird patterns that this piece features, though. The birds might connect the object with the culture that once lived in the Yangtze River Basin. But it's too early to say for sure. April 2021 saw archaeological digs carried out at a site around the theater in Minnesinsk, Russia, and those digs yielded some impressive results. Among the most noteworthy items collected by the archaeologists working on the dig is a comb made of mammoth tusk, a 5,000-year-old axe, and an object that might be an ancient child's toy. The variety of artifacts proves that the site has been in use constantly for thousands of years. While the axe might be prehistoric, the mammoth tusk comb is a product of the 18th century. There was once a river that flowed through this area, and the axe would have been buried in a layer of silt at the bottom of it. That explains how it survived to the present day. The child's toy is a clay whistle shaped like a duck. Like the comb, it's probably from the 18th century. It's a cute toy, but it would probably have been irritating if a child kept blowing it all day. A range of Russian coins from different eras has been found under the theater's car park, as well as a flywheel from a 1,000-year-old spindle. Work is ongoing, so this is another archaeological site that might yet have more to give. Dr. Kilian Fleischer, a classical philologist from Würzburg, Germany, is currently trying to decipher a collection of 2,000-year-old Greek texts. He isn't finding it an easy job, but that's no surprise. The texts were almost totally destroyed when Mount Vesuvius erupted in the year 79, and are now little more than blackened fragments. Dr. Fleischer relies on cutting-edge technology to assist him with his task, which would have been impossible as recently as 20 years ago. The texts come from the library of Greek philosopher Philodemus of Gadara, which was buried under ash when the effects of the volcano reached Herculaneum. It's fortunate that the intense heat of the eruption carbonized the scrolls in the library, rather than burning them. The doctor's work is slow and laborious. He has very little to show for his efforts yet, even after two years of work, but he considers it worthwhile. If he didn't do it, works of literature that were lost 2,000 years ago would never be rediscovered. One day, we'll know exactly what Philodemus had to say about the world around him and the time he lived in. The German Research Foundation's Institute for Archaeological Sciences has been researching the mysterious Nok culture in Nigeria since 2005, and its work isn't done yet. However, it is about to enter its final stage. By the time it's completed in two years, archaeologists hope to have a complete picture of the people who lived in this part of West Africa 2,500 years ago. Their civilization survived for around 1,500 years. They lived in small farming communities and grew pearl millet, but spent their spare time making ornate terracotta figures, like the ones you see in these images. They'd been coveted objects on the international art market long before anybody really knew where they came from. Some of the figures represent humans, but most of them represent animals. Historians don't currently know what purpose they were made for, 
assuming they had any meaning at all beyond art. In modern West Africa, it's still traditional in some cultures to make clay models of the deceased and place them on their graves. So archaeologists wonder whether this is the origin of that tradition. Let's hope they get some answers. Have you ever tried to get rid of a painful headache by eating chilies? How about seeking out the urine of a bull to deal with jaundice? We imagine you've done neither, but people swore by such treatments in China 2,000 years ago. We know that because we found their medical texts, written a line or two at a time on strips of bamboo. Almost 1,000 medicine strips of this kind were found during subway construction work close to Chengdu in China's Sichuan province in September 2013. Just over 700 of the strips relate to medical advice for humans. The rest all contain advice on how to treat illnesses and injuries in horses, which underlines how important horses were to the ancient Chinese. Historians think it's likely that the advice was written by the successors of Bian Kui, who wrote some of the earliest medical textbooks 2,500 years ago. While the medical advice given in these strips is largely useless, verging on dangerous in some cases, it's interesting that it doesn't contain any references to sorcery or witchcraft. The cures are presented as real-world solutions to real-world problems. The people of the time were extremely superstitious, so to write a purely medical guidebook would have been very forward-thinking. In 1868, two young boys named Jim Quinn and Patty Flanagan stumbled across a treasure collection while digging a potato field in Ardoch Island. It's now known as the Ardoch Hoard, and it's considered the finest collection of Irish Middle Ages metalwork ever to be discovered. The treasures come from the 8th and 9th centuries, and the prize of the collection is the Ardoch Chalice. This large silver cup, decorated with enamel, gold, bronze, brass, and lead pewter, is made from 354 different pieces, carefully put together by a master craftsperson. It's considered to be a Christian artifact on account of the names of the apostles appearing in a frieze around the bowl. As a symbol of Ireland, it's considered so important that its likeness appeared on postage stamps in the early 1990s. Two Gaelic football trophies are modeled on the chalice, although they're made from far less valuable materials. While theories about its purpose differ, it was most likely used to hold wine to be drunk during the celebration of Mass. Even then, it was probably reserved only for very special Masses. The Adena Pipe is so named because it was discovered in the Adena Mound of Ross County, Ohio, USA in 1901. In turn, the mound is named after the Adena people. Tubular pipes are common Adena discoveries because tobacco use was widespread among the people, but effigy pipes are far less common. It's this factor that makes the Adena pipe so interesting and also explains why it's been selected to be the state artifact of Ohio. Aside from being an interesting object, it's also provided archaeologists with plenty of information about Adena culture. The pipe is so detailed that it contains representations of hair, clothing, and ornamental accessories. Were it not for the existence of the pipe, the details of what the Adena people looked like wouldn't be known to modern archaeologists. Experts believe that it's around 2,300 years old. It was found in the grave of an adult male and might even be a representation of what he looked like when he was alive. Archaeologists think it's possible that he was either a shaman or a medicine man. In 1221, Emperor Gotaba led a rebellion against Hojo Yoshitoki, the leader of the Kamakura Shogunate, on the outskirts of Kyoto in Japan. The incident is remembered by history as the Jokyu Incident, and these picture scrolls are the only visual record of the conflict. That made it a tragedy when they went missing in the late 1930s. But in November 2020, the Museum of Kyoto confirmed they'd finally been rediscovered. The six scrolls aren't contemporary records of the battle. Instead, it's thought that they were made during the early Edo period of the 17th century. A textual record of the conflict was created at the time, and these scrolls take the original text and add pictures to it. 
They include the only known portraits of Yoshitoki, although their accuracy is debatable given the 400-year gap between the battle and the creation of the scrolls. The scrolls were eventually found in a private home, after going missing from the Kyoto National Museum in 1939, and it isn't known how they came to move from one place to the other, but the museum is glad to have them back in its collection. They're now back on public display, and presumably the museum is keeping a much closer eye on them this time. In August 2020, the National Museum of China staged a very special exhibition called The Sound of Harmony. The single most important artifact displayed to the public as part of the exhibition was this flute. It's more than 7,800 years old and is believed to be the oldest surviving wind instrument in the world. The instrument, known as the Jaihu Gudi, is made from the bones of crane birds. Despite its incredible age, it's still understood to possess accurate intonation to this very day, with seven sound holes similar to the ones you'd see on a modern flute. Some archaeologists and historians believe it to be even older than its stated age, with an age of 9,000 years considered to be possible. It's likely that the flute was used for rituals when it was first invented, but it became a template for the wind instruments that are played and used all over the world today. Over time, what used to be a ceremonial object became an important creative tool for music and art. Other artifacts on display at the same exhibition included a 2,500-year-old Bianshong bell chime and a Tang Dynasty Gu Quin. Of all the artifacts that might survive for centuries underwater, you'd expect clothing to be among the first to perish. Here's some very expensive clothing that didn't. In 1642, a baggage ship sank on the way from England to the Netherlands. Aboard the ship were two wardrobes belonging to Henrietta Maria, the French queen consort of King Charles II of England. Some of her own clothes were in the wardrobes, as were dresses belonging to two of her ladies-in-waiting and their maids. The shipwreck was eventually discovered in 2015 off the coast of the island of Texel, half buried in sand. We might have the sand to thank for the excellent preservation of these regal textiles. Among the collection of recovered garments is an exquisite silk gown along with bodices, stockings, and personal effects like a louse comb and a dedicated embroidery purse. Taken all together, this is now considered one of the most important textile discoveries ever made in Europe. The clothes aren't in a fit state to be worn, but they've made excellent exhibition pieces for the Kopskill Museum in Udishtil. There was controversy in England in October 2017 when a pair of ancient Greek vases offered for sale at the London Frieze Masters Art Fair were accused of being stolen. The beautiful vases were offered for prices of more than £100,000 each by Swiss art dealer Jean-David Kahn when questions started to be raised about who'd handled them before Kahn acquired them. It turned out that they used to belong to Gianfranco Becina, who was convicted of the illegal trafficking of cultural property in 2015. The two marble vases in question are 2,400 years old and considered to be excellent examples of Lekythos. A trail of paper evidence suggests they were stolen from Athens during the 1970s. The Art Masters Fair initially insisted that it had received clearance for the sale of the items from the Swiss authorities, but backed down when it was presented with photographic evidence of their true provenance. There's no suggestion that Jean-David Kahn knew his pieces were stolen. Greece has since submitted an ownership claim to the artifacts, and they've been repatriated to their homeland. While archaeologists make a lot of incredible discoveries, they are sometimes beaten to the punch by amateurs with metal detectors. We saw that happen in May 2016, which is when Riejo Hivonen and his metal detector found this three-headed eagle pendant on the island of Pondosari in Finland. The curious artifact is a relic of the Iron Age. None of the archaeologists and experts that Riejo has shown his piece to has ever seen anything like it before. So all the theories about its meaning are little more than guesswork. 
While double-headed eagles are referenced in the mythology of various different ancient cultures, there are far fewer references to three-headed eagles and none at all in Finnish legend. One interpretation is that the three heads represent three people. Another is that it's a personal item that was left as either a votive offering or perhaps as a tribute to someone who'd passed away. The reality of the situation is that we don't know. That's the thing about ancient artifacts. They don't come with a biography or an explanation. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.